Hi everyone. In this video I wanted to talk about transistors. So what is a transistor? Well it's of course an electronic component and an extremely important one because it builds the um, it's the foundation of electronics basically. Um, but anyway what is it? It can do two things. They're used as switches and they're used as amplifiers. I'm not going to talk about amplifiers, I'm going to talk about switching. So anyway, let's assume we have a circuit and the circuit can power an LED or whatever but we'll have a switch in the circuit and it's a manual switch and you basically switch it on with your finger or switch it off with your finger. Of course when the switch is closed the circuit will power whatever it is, the LED or whatever and when it's open it will not power the circuit and the LED won't glow. So fairly easy. But what if you wanted to control the switch electronically? What happens if you didn't want to press a switch? You wanted to do it electronically? Well, that's where transistors come in handy. So if we just remove the switch and replace it with a transistor, this is the symbol for transistor, um, what will happen is that you would do something over here and control the amount of amperage or voltage and you could therefore manipulate the switch. So basically that's what, what you can use them for. You can use transistors as a switch. There are two main types of transistor. There's NPN and there's PNP. And both of these types of transistor are called BJTs and that stands for Bipolar Junction uh, Transistor. So BJTs. Um, right, now the way these differ is the way you manipulate them in order to use them as switches. Basically you have to provide a current or a flow of current from one uh, terminal through another in order to switch them on. And the flow from two different terminals is different between the two. Anyway, so if I just draw draw these things out you'll see what I mean. So I'll draw that there. So we've got two transistors and this can be NPN and this can be PNP. So the diagrams for these two transistors are like this. Um, with the NPN transistor you'll see a little arrow there like that and with the PNP transistor you'll see an arrow there like that. Um, sometimes people draw the PNP one reversed um, I actually prefer it reversed, but whatever. I mean, this is the correct way. The labels of these are collector, base, and emitter. And on here, it's the other way around. It's emitter, collector, and base. Right, so let's uh, pretend to use these now. So with the NPN transistor, Let's uh, put it in a circuit. So let's say that's going off to a circuit and let's say this is going off to a circuit too. In fact, let's say this is going to ground. So we've got a circuit there from an LED, a battery or whatever and it comes down here. So we'll say energy is flowing down here and we want it to flow down here too uh, from somewhere to ground. Okay, well if that wasn't connected to anything if the base was left loose like that, it wouldn't flow. Power wouldn't flow through here. And with the NPN transistor, if you supply some current to here, and the current has a clear path down to the emitter, so in other words, if we, uh, if we now power this up, so current could come through here, and it has a clear path, it will then open this here, so then it will open this path and therefore this will start flowing. It will start flowing down here and complete this circuit here, the main circuit. So just again you have a circuit and by default if the base isn't powered it's open, open circuit. But if the base is powered and there's current flowing from the base to the emitter this will switch on, close the circuit and then the main circuit here will be powered. And that's how the NPN uh, circuit works. Now let's move on to the PNP uh, transistor circuit. So we have power 
and it's coming from the emitter this time so we'll have power it comes down here comes down here you want it to flow through here and you want it to flow through here flow through here and let's say we've got ground again so we've got our circuit, we've got an LED, battery, whatever it's flowing down here, down here by default because the base is not connected to anything this is an open circuit it's an open circuit so nothing's powering or anything like that but how do we switch this one on? this is slightly different to the base one on the NPN so with the base one on the NPN you power it with an amount of current and make sure that the current can get from the base to the emitter and it switches it on the PNP is different so what happens with the PNP transistor is that you need to have a path from the emitter to well let's say ground so let's say here we have ground and now if this is connected to ground it means that a small amount of current can flow through the emitter through the base so let's draw that on there, we've got an arrow there, through there, through there down here, down here, down here and it can go through to ground now when this path here is, uh, is closed then it opens up the, sorry it closes off the primary circuit so let's just uh, go over that again so we've got a main circuit here and we want the current to flow through or the voltage to flow through from the emitter here down to the collector um, by default it can't but as soon as you join the base to um, a voltage lower than this or let's just say for argument's sake connect it to ground then the path here is closed, it's a closed path and therefore what happens is it opens up this path here, the main path and then the primary circuit can send its current straight down here and then that's how that circuit uh, works, that's how the PNP transistor works so just to reiterate both on the NPN transistor the collector is plus and the emitter is minus and on the PNP transistor the emitter is plus and the collector is minus on the NPN transistor to turn it on you give it a plus uh, an amount of current through the base to the emitter and that switches it on on the PNP you give the base a minus and you connect the E to let's say ground it actually has to be a, something lower than E but let's say ground so you connect you allow E the emitter to go to a lower voltage so basically join the base to ground and then this will flow and that's how you switch the PNP transistor okay so we've got the two types of transistor but why do we need the two types well I'll try and explain it now um, there's a thing called saturation and um, when you saturate a transistor it um, it affects its open or closed property uh, in the case of an NPN transistor if you saturate it it means that it closes and if you don't saturate it it means it's open um, but to saturate it you have to give a higher voltage to the base than you do with the collector so you supply the base with a higher voltage and when you do that um, it then closes the circuit so let's say we have a 12 volt battery and we have a, uh, a bulb or something like that let's say it's a 12 volt bulb so um, down here you've not really got any voltage so I've left this open here but down here you've not got much voltage if that was to be uh, a closed circuit uh, you wouldn't have any voltage you'd have a voltage drop here of 12 volts here there would be no voltage drop so 12 volts here it's consumed here and here would be no volts um, but if we were to put a switch in here or even better let's say the transistor if we were to put the transistor in here uh, what it would mean is that we would to saturate this here we wouldn't have to supply much voltage there would be, there'd be a 12 volt drop here so the voltage here will be next to zero so we'd only have to supply a very small voltage to be able to saturate the transistor in order to easily control whether it's closed or open so yeah um, 
Okay, so with NPN in this particular circuit here, we're fine. But let's get the NPN transistor and try and make it work here and find out what's going to happen. So this is called high side switch, and this is a low side switch. In other words, we switch after the uh, voltage drop. In here, we're going to switch before the voltage drop. And what it means is that the voltage before this switch here is going to be 12, but of course the voltage here is near zero. And this presents a bit of an issue. So let's have our NPN transistor again. Let's just put this in here. So if we want to close the circuit, we have to supply a voltage to the base pin. And the voltage to the base pin, because this is NPN, has got to be higher than the, the pin here. So this is 12 volts, so here we'd have to supply more than 12 volts to saturate it completely. Because like I said, with transistors, to use them as switches, you want to either saturate it or not saturate it. So here, we probably have to supply 12 and a half, well, 12.6 volts or something like that in order to saturate this um, in order to control or manipulate the switch. And that's not ideal. We don't really want to supply this with 12 and a half volts. And the reason for that is because usually these things are done with microcontrollers and microcontrollers are generally not 12 volt devices. And we don't want to work with such high voltages we want to work with um, maybe 5 volts, or maybe we want to work with 3.3 volts. They're the common voltages for microcontrollers. So it's not ideal to have to uh, provide this with 12.5 volts. It's really awkward. Um, whereas over here, low side switching, we can very easily provide it with 5 volts, which will easily saturate this, because the uh, collector here will be near 0 volts. So it's very easy. Anyway, so... NPN is really awkward over here. So this is where PNP comes in. So now if we were to put a PNP in here, um, things will change. So if you remember with PNP, the current will try to flow through the primary circuit here, but if you can make a path from here to base, you will close the circuit here, the primary circuit. So if I was to ground this pin here, um, current would be able to flow, only a tiny amount of current would be able to flow through here, through here, and therefore switch on the primary circuit, and therefore turn it on. Now for a microcontroller to ground that, that's really easy, um, because you can easily get a connection to ground. You could even get a microcontroller and just set the signal to low. Um, you'd have to have a resistor there. But that's really simple to do on a microcontroller. And um, yeah, so that's basically one of the reasons why you have NPN and PNP. So just before I finish this video, I thought I'd show you two transistors. So the one on the left here is called TIP41C, and the one on the right is called TIP, sorry, TIP42C. And the TIP41C is NPN, and the TIP42C is PNP, and these are what's called complementary transistors. Anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you for watching. Bye!